Today I'm going to talk to you guys about calculating instantaneous velocity by using the definition of a derivative. Before we start, it's good to know that if we have a function, we'll call it p of t, and we'll use this to represent the position of an object. It's good to know that the derivative of p of t, so p prime of t, is equal to the velocity function related to that position function, so v of t. This function will calculate the velocity. Now if we take the derivative of the velocity function, which is the derivative of the derivative of the position function, this will give us a of t, which can represent the acceleration of the object. This is good to know for later. Right now we're just going to focus on velocity, but it's a good thing to know. Alright, so let's take a look at a scenario with a couple of questions. So, a rock thrown vertically from the surface of the moon will have a height s in meters after t seconds given by the equation s of t is equal to 45 minus 2.5 t squared. Okay, let's take a look at the first question for this scenario. So we want to determine the rock's velocity three seconds after the rock was thrown. So how do we go about doing this? So we remember the equation from before. S of t is equal to 45t minus 2.5t squared. So to find velocity, we want to take the derivative of this function. So we're going to say s prime of t is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. So you should remember this formula. And so now we're doing f of t plus h minus f of t. then all that is going to be over h. So when we go to the next line, it's going to be the limit as h approaches 0, and we're going to expand these terms. See if we can expand and cancel some of them out, hopefully. So it'll be 45t plus 45h minus 2.5t squared minus 5ht minus 2.5h squared minus 45t plus 2.5t squared and all of that's going to be over h. So now we can cancel out our 45t's, the 2.5t squareds, and now we can go to the next line. And it's still the limit as h approaches 0. We're going to factor out an h on the top, so we're left with h multiplied by 45 minus 5t minus 2.5h over h. So we can cancel out these h's, and now as we take the limit as h approaches 0, we can sub in 0 for h, so we're just left with 45 minus 5t. Now we're not quite done the question yet. This is just our velocity function. So now we're going to sub in 3 into the velocity function for t, because we want the time after 3 seconds have passed. So after carrying out these steps, that's going to give us it is traveling 30 meters per second after 3 seconds. So now let's take a look at another question for this scenario. We want to know after how much time is the rock at rest? So what we're going to do is take that velocity function that we figured out in the previous question, which is v of t is equal to 45 minus 5t. And to be at rest, the rock has to have a velocity of 0. So we're going to set this equation to be 0. Now we can factor out a 5 out of both terms and divide both sides by 5, which will give us 9 minus t equals 0, and so therefore t equals 9, and after 9 seconds the rock will be at rest. I hope that after watching this video you guys know a little more about instantaneous velocity. If you're interested in learning more about the formal definition of a derivative, make sure to check out some of my other videos. As always, if you're still confused or have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment.